Question 3 from the 2019 Higher Physics SQA Section 2 exam. And it's that usual knowledge of physics to comment on this statement. Now these are quite a hard question to do and there has to be a technique that you can easily launch yourself into to answer them and not be afraid of them. Here's what the examination board says. If you want to have the top marks in this question, 3 out of 3, then you have to have a good understanding of the physics involved. And you've also got to show a good comprehension of the physics of the situation and provide a logically correct answer to the question posed. Now, this type of response might include a statement of principles involved. So when I look at that question, I think, kicking a ball, that's an impulse. That's a change of momentum. That might be my leading point, lead in point for that. And then, of course, you, got, you have to put down a relationship or an equation. Well, once again, that's impulse, change of momentum, FT, MV minus MU. So you've got that. And then you can apply that, that, that equation to the problem to see if you can solve what the statement uh, is going to be about. So really, there's three things here we're looking for in this question. And the first is a statement of the principles involved. State that this is a question about the impulse given to a ball, whether it's stationary or whether it's approaching you. That's the statement, which is, that's the principle involved. A relationship or an equation, well, that can be FT equals MV minus MU from your data sheet. And then you have to apply to the problem. That's the kind of harder part. You have to assume certain things and apply it to the equation to see if that's going to solve this problem for you. Okay, let's begin then with the question. Let's look at the statement of principles involved. Well, first of all, a footballer tells teammates that a football can be kicked a much greater distance when the ball is initially travelling towards them compared to kicking a stationary ball. So that's a statement of principles involved. It must be to do with impulse. We know that uh, when an object is given a force over a given time of contact, it's going to change its momentum. So that's going to be what we call an impulse. So if you give an impulse to an object, you're going to change its momentum. So the momentum is going to be change. Change of momentum. And remember, momentum is going to be a vector quantity as well, so watch that. So what is the impulse? Well, you can explain impulse is the force applied, and T is going to be the contact time. So FT is the impulse, units, newton seconds. And that's going to give us a change of momentum. MV is going to be a final momentum, and take away MU is going to be your initial momentum. Now, that's has got the equations. We understand what the problem is about. And now we can put in our assumptions. And this is going to help us apply these sort of assumptions to the problem. So what are we going to assume then? Well, we're going to assume the following. Let's assume that the force applied to the object is going to be 100 newtons. So the footballer kicks the ball with an average force of 100 newtons. And the time of contact with his foot and the ball We'll just guess to point one seconds. These are reasonable guesses. These are the sort of things you have in your, you should have in your, your cupboard to answer these questions. Think of reasonable numbers. The mass of the football. Well, it's not going to be 20 kilograms or 100 kilograms. Which that's like a cannonball. It's going to be about half a kilogram. So you guess that, and that should got a reasonable assumption. Now you can go ahead and work out the velocity immediately after the collision of the foot to the ball here. So initially, the initial velocity is going to be zero, and the final velocity is what we're looking for. So we're going to have FT, and it's going to equal to MV minus MU. So we're going to have bracket 100 times 0 0.1. And that's going to equal to m, the mass, 0 0.5 of the ball, times the speed it moves away at, v, take away nothing, because u is going to be equal to 0. So if we rearrange that then, we get v is going to be equal to 10 divided by 0 0.5, which is going to give you 20 metres per second. So you've got a reasonable answer, where the speed of the ball as it moves away is going to be 20 metres per second. And... The speed of the ball moving away will, of course, uh, the, the distance the ball will move away depends on the, the initial speed. And you can write that down. So the distance travelled by the ball depends on the initial speed. 
Now you can go to town on that one, but don't want to waste too much time, initial speed. You can say we're going to ignore air friction, ignore friction of any kind. And that's what you're going to have. So that's the first part of the problem done. You now ascertained that when a ball is kicked by a footballer, in your reasoning, it's going to make that ball move away initially with a velocity of 20 metres per second. And that 20 metres per second is going to carry it a certain distance. Now let's move on into the whole crux of the problem. Remember the problem says that uh, a footballer tells teammates that a football can be kicked a much greater distance when the ball is initially travelling towards them compared to kicking a stationary ball. Now we've got the information for the stationary ball. It's going to move at 20 metres per second. So we move on to the second part of the problem then. So let's assume that the ball is going to be moving towards the football. What speed? Well, let's take something like half the speed that he can kick it at. So let's assume, once again, it's moving towards the football 10 metres per second. Where did I get that from? I looked at the initial kick of the ball, 20 metres per second, and just halved it. I'm just making a reasonable guess here. So we also assume that we're going to have the same impulse. The footballer is going to kick the ball with the same impulse. So it's going to be the same force. And that's going to be 100 newtons. Same time of contact, 0 0.1. We're assuming these things. And that's going to equal to mv minus mu. So v is the speed we're looking for. And the initial speed is going to be 10 meters per second coming towards it. And a velocity 10 meters per second to the left. Now we have to be very careful here because that's going to be negative. And we have to always consider momentum to be a vector. So if the direction is very important, as we'll see in a minute. So the final velocity is going to be the mass, 0 0.5 times V, that's the final velocity. Take away, bracket, it's going to be minus 0 0.5 times 10, because the velocity is going to be to the left. So we're going to have over here, 10 is going to equal to 0 0.5 V, and it's going to be 0 0.5 times 10 is 5, minus minus 5 is plus 5. So that's got an equation here. So we rearrange and we get 10, take away 5, is going to equal to 0 0.5 V. So therefore, we're going to have 5 is going to equal to 0 0.5 V. And therefore, the final speed of the ball this time is going to be 5 divided by 0 0.5, which is going to give you 10 meters per second. So the ball is going to move away at 10 meters per second. Now, that means that the ball's not going to go as far, further or far as the one kicked at 20 metres per second. So we can see we've found an anomaly in the argument. We have made perfectly reasonable assumptions and we'll come up with the conclusion that when the ball is moving towards you with a speed of 10 metres per second, it's not going to go further when it's kicked the same impulse. Okay. So that's us sort of kind of disproved that argument then. So our calculations... You can write, end up with writing our calculations, calculations, our calculations show that the ball won't go further or won't travel further because it's got a smaller speed, won't travel further because its initial speed is smaller because it's initial speed is smaller is smaller so the person could be wrong then so we've got a question mark it could be wrong now why am i saying that then because we haven't looked into the whole of the problem but we don't need to do that because we go back to our original definition of this of what the examiner wants us to do and you can see that point down here it says the answer does not need to be excellent or complete for the candidate to gain full marks. Complete, which means you don't have to do another problem, you don't have to look at different things, you don't have to look at different uh, speeds of the ball coming towards you. You have looked down, you have, you've done your own assumptions and on the first level you've seen you've come up with an anomaly. The ball kicked from rest is 20 meters per second. The ball kicked when it's approaching at 10 meters per second is going to leave at 10 meters per second if the distance is going to be, in fact, smaller. So therefore you've come up with that anomaly, and that should be enough to give you the three marks. You've proved something out of your own reasoning, 
and of your own application and of your own knowledge of physics. Thank you.